In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to use Charles's law. Question one reads, a sample of gas has a volume of 2.80 liters at an unknown temperature. When the sample is submerged in ice water at a temperature of T is equal to 0 0.00 Celsius, its volume decreases to 2.57 liters. What was its initial temperature in Kelvin and in Celsius? We're told the original volume, which we'll denote as V1, is equal to 2.80 liters. We're also told that its final volume, which I'll denote as V2, is 2.57 liters. Given that they're asking for the initial temperature, which is T1, we've been given T2 as 0, 0.00 Celsius. We need to convert this into Kelvin. So 0 Celsius is actually equal to 273.15 Kelvin. I'll write down 273.15. All we have to do is apply these numbers into Charles's law formula, and we're done. Let's go ahead and do that. We have 2.80 divided by T1, which is what we're looking for. And instead of putting a question mark, I'll put a variable, is equal to V2, which is 2.57, a decrease, and T2 is 273.15. Now to find T1, we'll cross multiply. So we'll take this variable, multiply it to 2.57, and take 273.50 and multiply it to 2.80. Let's use our calculator. 273.15 times 2.80 gives us 764.82, 764.82, and T1 times 2.57 is T1 bracket 2.57. Finally, to isolate for T1, we will divide both sides by 2.57. So 764.82 divided by 2.57 gives us T1. Dividing this by 2.57, we get a final temperature of 297.59. 297.59. Now let's talk about significant figures. The number at the top has 5, and the number at the bottom has 3. The last significant figure here is 7. Everything after the 7 should be discarded. But because it's followed by a 5 and this number is odd, this will go up to 298 Kelvin. They also want this in Celsius. And for that we'll use this conversion where at 0 Celsius it's 273.15. So I'll take this number, 298, and subtract it from 273.15. So taking 298 minus 273.15 gives us 24.85 and since we are subtracting, adding and subtracting significant figures, you only take into account the number of digits after the decimal place. Since 298 didn't have any numbers after its decimal place and Calvin is an exact number, then our final answer is just 24 and that's in Celsius. Let's move on to question two. A gas in a cylinder with a movable piston has an initial volume of 88.2 milliliters, so that's V1. If the gas is heated from 35 Celsius to 155 Celsius, what is the final volume? So we have been given this number. We're looking for a final volume. We know that our initial temperature is 35 and it goes to a final temperature of 155. Now using Charles's law, we have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And before replacing T1 and T2 with these temperatures that are in Celsius, we need to convert these into Kelvin because the ideal gas law is configured that way. It's in Kelvin. So we have V1, which is 88.2 over 273.15 plus 35 is equal to what we're looking for, V2, and T2 is 155 plus 273.15. Using our calculator, 273.15 plus 35, that's 308.15. I'll write that down so I won't forget, 308.15. And this becomes 155 plus 273.15. I get 428.15. Now to cross multiply, I'll take this number and multiply it to 88.2. And 
and I'll take this number, multiply it by V2, then subsequently divide both sides by that number. So technically, I'm taking this and dividing by 308.15. This gives us 122.54. 122.54. Our final answer should have three significant figures. So this, given that it's a 5 and it's followed by another number, this means that this will go up to 123 and the units are in liters. The reason why we round to three significant figures is because when you add these two numbers up, remember when you add, you take into account only the numbers after the decimal place. This number didn't have any numbers after its decimal. So technically, this should have only been 308, but I kept the 15 when I did the calculation to prevent any sort of rounding errors, and same with this. But eventually, you should only have 3. And so there you have it. That is how to use Charles's Law to solve problems involving volume and temperature.